Well, I gotta think there's gonna be some competition for bonus money in this one. The kicks are gonna be flying early and often. He's one of the better kickboxing practitioners we have in this division. Yeah, when he can make you fight him in a kickboxing fight, I mean, you would imagine you're watching this guy in glory or something yeah. because he's so good in this specific area of fighting. He mixes everything up so well from in close. He's so comfortable in close. He's rolling his shoulders, rolling right to leg kicks. He will batter and bruise you and beat you up from in close. He's amazing. You better take this dude down if you want a chance to win this fight. Right. No, you put it well, and he has adapted his style very well to mixed martial arts. But when the fight is on the feet, caution flammable. Again, ready to engage in a big spot here tonight. It's always tough when you draw that high-level wrestler who has a lifetime of experience in a one-on-one -on -one competitive situation. Prevailing wisdom is he'll have the wrestling advantage in this one time. As his dad said, the moment he introduced him to the sport, he knew that he was made to be a wrestler. The kid slept in his headgear. He only wants to wrestle, and by doing that, he puts you in danger. He's constantly in your face, constantly trying to dig at your gas tank. He goes from transition to transition, single to double to high crotch. It does not matter the attack, he just knows that he will give you so much to process in terms of the wrestling that eventually he will get you to the ground. You ever sleep in your head gear? I sleep in my head gear. All the time? All the time. All right, big one for him here tonight. Let's get to it. This one just about to get underway. All right, so here we go with this stand-up only fight. You guys got to play by the rules. No grappling or wrestling of any type. Also, you cannot do follow-up strikes on the floor. Let's see who the last man standing will be tonight. Nice straight there by Johnson. Strong defense here as the hook to the head is blocked. Flips the punch. Nice counter left there. Well, the pleasant way to put it is that the fighters are respecting each other, feeling each other out, and managing risk, but really not much in terms of action thus far. No, they got to get going. I understand that when people are fresh, they're very scary. But you cannot be this cautious. Oh! Big shots exchanged in the pocket there. All right, so now blood is a factor. You see that he has been opened up in that eye area. Yeah, he's got hit in the eye, and now there's a cut. But it's nothing to worry about too much now. So he's got to be very careful with it as we go forward. Oh, nice straight left. Oh, gets on the feet. His opponent in a lot of trouble now. That was Cain Velasquez's punch of choice. Every time he lands that overhand right, he hurt people bad. And this guy has his opponent hurt very badly again. Both men going for the finish. He's hurting bad, man. That right hook is nasty. This is such 
such a crazy fight. All right, well, good news is he rocked him. Bad news is he wasn't able to finish the job, and now his opponent's back in the fight. I mean, you don't get those opportunities very often. You got to take full advantage of them when they're presented to you. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Misha Serkinov. Shot finds the target there. Great shot lands. Now he's got to go find that follow up. The kill shot is what they call it to go and end the fight. Hands on your face. Yeah, that punch was blocked. Some damage being doled out, and now some swelling upstairs on his opponent. He's not moving his head effect. He's trying to be face first. Look, you don't have to prove how tough you are. You got to move your head, be active. Don't be reactive in your defenses. It's a nice straight. Every strike he lands, that cut gets worse. Yeah, it's getting worse. And he needed to address it a little bit sooner because now that damage is starting to pile up. Oh, oh you got to keep pressing here. Could be the beginning of the end. And what a round! All right, so that's the end of the round. Potential adversity here. He's got a cut on his cheek sustained from that strike in the round. Now the focus becomes maximizing these 60 seconds, shutting that cut and preventing it from becoming a major factor here moving forward. All right, so the cut man attends to the fighter who has essentially been rendered a one-eyed fighter at this point in time. Some replays from the previous round. No defensive intent, no defensive intensity. No attention to his defense, and this costing him. Now he's dealing with a massive cut over his eye, and that's going to make it hard for him to see. He's got to change something, man. He's got to. You ready to fight? Ready. Second yeah. round underway. All right, next round is now underway. I thought there was pretty good back and forth action in the previous round. Yes, it wasn't a far fight. It wasn't two guys throwing the kitchen sink at each other. But you did see times. Oh, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed up there. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talks to your toughness. Man, this has been tested early. There by the Canadian Serpent. Oh, that's a brutal cut on his nose there. He is bleeding. Just over three minutes to go. Official decision is in. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called a stop to this contest at one minute, 58 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout, Anthony Rumble Johnson. Well, congratulations are in order to Anthony Rumble Johnson. He came into the fight having won eight UFC bonuses, and given that performance, I wouldn't be surprised to see him secure a ninth. I have called this guy the most vaunted power threat in the history of the UFC, and I think he showed you exactly why here tonight. Another major milestone checked off the bucket list for Anthony Rumble Johnson here tonight.